I kind of think of Build-A-Bear as being something for kids. The holiday season's coming up. So is that why you're not expecting a slowdown? Because a lot of these will be bought as gifts for, for kids? Well, there is some aspect of that uh, that we're you know kid based, but 40% of our sales are now to teens and adults, which uh, has been a reflection of a long term strategic shift for us and being multi generational. But the more important data point would be that, as we announced in our second quarter call, we've been outpacing uh, traditional traffic uh, that's been reported by 144 weeks uh, in a, on a consecutive basis. So I think that some of what we've been doing, though, is understanding that it's not just traffic that's involved in driving profitable sales. It's uh, all the four levers of retail, um, traffic conversion, dollars per transaction, as well as units per transaction, mm -hmm. as well as the integration into what's being now called the digital economy, the mashup of both the physical and the digital and the creation of a destination, a reason for consumers to come, uh, a way to allow them to shop the way they want to so that they can um, yeah. either buy okay. online, ship from store. So a lot of different options Got for it. our consumers to get engaged. So, Sharon, yeah. I want to talk to you about that digital economy that you're talking about. I like that one. Yeah. Um, a lot of concerns about the commercial real estate sector and just retail being a little bit soft right now, but you're actually opening up dozens of stores why are you so focused on brick and mortar and why aren't you push, completely pushing a direct to consumer and online like a lot of other brands are? Well, we're, I can't say that we're so focused on brick and mortar. We're actually the core of our strategy is a diversification strategy. Um, and as long as we're op oper operating and opening profitable retail, which we are, 100 percent of our stores are profitable um, and we're still seeing uptrends on that. Um, I, that would be, I believe, a really great use of our capital to continue to evolve okay. the business. That's a big way of, that's a big reason why we have the loyalty that we have. That interaction and one to one relationship with our guest is really important. And that's what drives our loyalty program and our first party data. Okay. So I also want to ask you about higher for longer, rates being higher. How is it impacting your customers? How is it impacting your business? I know you said your stores are profitable, but does that change the value proposition of opening up these new stores and holding all this inventory? When you look at a build a bear, there's, you know, some bears in there. You have to hold some inventory. We do hold inventory. We're quite good at our inventory management, though. I think we've proven that over the course of time. We are able to turn that uh, that inventory into cash fairly rapidly. Um, and, um, you know, we're, we are, from a retail perspective, when you have that type of uh, profitability in our stores, they're good, it's a good cash flow organization. So, no, it's not really impacting us directly. What about um, your customers? Think, mm -hmm. uh, well, our customers, of course, they're just a – a cross section of uh, the economy, so there will be some. There could be some impact there. Uh, we are seeing some shifts in those four levers um, from the okay. traffic and dollars per transaction, but overall, we are expecting, as we've noted in our second quarter call, to see an improvement versus prior year, which were record-setting numbers.